if you had to take a guess, how do you think the process of an egg goes? It comes from a hen. Good job. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, science pals. Welcome back to another episode of The Random Theory. I'm Grace. And I'm Josh. And together we make up The Random Theory. We're all about making yeah. science a lifestyle here. <laughs> nice. Asking lots yep. of questions, being curious asking, about the world. Asking all the questions. How's it going? Oh, you know, doing well. Life is wonderful. Spring is finally in the city, and I feel like everyone in New York is just abundant with life. Uh, really? Finally. Yeah. I, I mean, the winters here suck, but like yeah. to be completely frank, <laughs> winters in New York are are quite literally the worst place you could ever spend winter. Especially because this winter we didn't get any snow. So it, it just made it cold and miserable. Oh, you did? There was no snow there? No snow at all. We got no oh, snow. Oh, wow. Do you yeah. want to take some of Utah's snow? That's fine. No. Thank God Utah got snow, though. You desperately needed it. The West Utah, desperately needed it. We needed that. We needed the moisture, as everyone says. What's up with your life? Anything good? I mean, yeah, it's spring here. It's a good day. Uh, I hate spring because I have bad allergies, so I'm like not <laughs> thriving there. But it's okay, um, you're doing great. Just hanging in there, you know, getting getting through the allergies and everything. Shall we hop into ratings and reviews? I think so. You've got you've got the podcast idea right from an email. Yes, I do. And so I've got a rating and review. Um, this is coming from Apple Pod. So if you like the show, hop over to Apple Pod, leave us a rating and review. It really helps us out. More than you know. Yes. So this is also, um, we discovered on the back end, we weren't seeing all our reviews. We were only seeing reviews from the United States. Whoops. So this is coming from Australia. One of our listeners from Australia and the review is like a year old. So sorry about <laughs> that. Really sorry. We really hope you're still listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this review comes from Bryce. Hello, Bryce. They said, inspiring show was the title. Ah, thank you, thank you. I started off watching TCOR years ago, and when I heard Grace was going to be hosting a podcast all about science and facts, I was so excited for the day it was announced. Every day I checked to see if the first episode had launched. I absolutely... <laughs> I absolutely love this podcast and listen to it while I fall asleep and get my daily dose of science. Love what you guys do. Keep going. Oh, thanks, Bryce. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry it took us like literally a year to read that review. We appreciate you, Bryce. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yet another person that listens to us uh, while they fall asleep, which is interesting. Yes. Um, I don't quite understand it, but I'm here for it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, if, if, as long as you're listening, do it whenever you want. I don't care. That's great. Yeah, I love it. All oh, right. No. Mine comes from an email from randomtheorypod at gmail.com. It says, hello, t -Core. I've watched your channel for a while. And when I heard you had a podcast, I was really excited. I just wanted to say hi. And I have a podcast topic. I would like to know about how eggs and feathers are made i really enjoy your podcast and i hope you guys make new podcast episodes soon also i have a knock knock joke knock knock who's there who 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 is there an owl in here <laughs> <laughs> nice that came from solomon williams in vermont age okay 10. Solomon. thank you solomon Solomon, I think this is a wonderful question, and I cannot thank you enough for writing in and giving us such a wonderful review. I can't believe you're 10 asking these questions. That's so amazing. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so great. So glad you're listening. Honestly, so amazing to me. I think of all these awesome kids that listen to our podcast, and I'm like, you guys are going to be the coolest teenagers, truthfully. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, first, I... My first thought is like, what are you doing listening to these two monkeys wearing <laughs> a trench coat? But also like, so glad you're listening. <laughs> that's I love that's it. So I great. literally yeah. love it. All right. Shall we talk about eggs? Eggs. I think we're going to top into an egg-tastic podcast <laughs> <laughs> after this commercial break. This will be excellent. <laughs> excellent. We are back with eggs. Um... 
Okay, like just jumping in here, for anyone that doesn't know, I feel like Grace and I have a weird, <laughs> I wouldn't say obsession or anything. Like we just think eggs are funny. I think eggs are hilarious. <laughs> if anyone hasn't seen it, you know, we have the YouTube channel T-Core. We made a video where Grace was making fire starters out of eggshells. It was really cool. It was really cool, but like for whatever reason was just the funniest thing in the world. It's also in our YouTube channel trailer if you want to go check it out. Oh, yeah. There is a <laughs> clip where I'm like yelling like things are getting out of hand or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. The best part was like t is very unscripted. Yeah. But that was such an unscripted moment. And oh, I think yeah. it made it that much better. Like we were just having so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what it. Yeah. That's what it is. We just had like that video was a really cool thing, a like cool concept. And we just had so much fun doing it. And it, it was, was free just for all. like, yeah, it was a free for all. <laughs> okay. Eggs. So eggs, eggs are this, uh, this podcast might change how you eat eggs. I had an egg this morning and you know, I wrote this podcast. And so I'm a big egg person. Yeah. My feelings on eggs after like hearing this podcast and then cooking an egg. Yeah. It's a little interesting. Oh, is this going to ruin eggs for me? It might. <laughs> oh, no. I don't So like eggs, I know. Eggs are a part of the hen's reproductive system. Before we get into it, I want you to think, Josh, in your head, how do you okay. think eggs are created? And our, our listeners, viewers, how if you had to take a guess, how do you think the process of an egg goes? It comes from a hen. Good job. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> And that's it. That's that's the, all you that, got. That's the story. What do you think comes first, egg whites or yolk? Oh, like in the the development process. Yeah. I want to say the yolk develops first, and then the egg white like develops around it. Okay. But I have not. I don't, I'm not basing that <laughs> on like literally anything. That's just you know. That's just off the top of your head. That's just yeah. That's just what I'm feeling right now. Okay, I like it. Like uh, are you an egg yolk or an egg white person? Like, do you like one more than the other when you're eating an egg? Mm, I like egg whites because they taste cleaner. Yeah. Okay. The yolk is just, I mean, it, oh, as sad as it is to say it, it's like unfertilized baby chicken Ugh. in yeah. liquid form. Sweet. Ew. Okay. Well, I... <laughs> I'm a person that uh, when I cook an egg, I, I like them. Um, what are these? What is it called? Like over hard? Oh yeah, where the yolk yolk is hard in the center. Solid, yeah, solid yeah. in the uh, solid in the center. No runny. Oh, yolk. if I'm if I'm eating one, I like it sunny side up. Like I like that oh, yolk yeah. runny, soggy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you like do the like dip a little toast in there? Absolutely. Action? Yeah. yeah Clean up my plate me. afterwards. Oh, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> not for me. Not, not it. For not me. it. Nah. All right. Well, eggs are, you got this part right. Eggs are part of a hen's reproductive system. Good yeah. Job. I absolutely read that sentence off of the page. <laughs> Good job. So, so when a hen reaches maturity, the lighting condition triggers hormones to start the egg laying cycle. Oh. Yeah, it takes about 25 hours for a hen to create an egg from start to finish. And as soon as one egg is laid, the whole process starts over again and a new egg begins to form. Oh, wow. Good for us. Yeah. I, d I don't know if I had an idea of like how long it would be, but that feels shorter than it should be, I feel like. I feel like it doesn't feel that way for me because I uh, grew up with chickens. Oh, okay. And so I, I know that you go get an egg every day. I don't know. The one, I guess, yeah, you know, I grew up in the country, but we never had chickens, so. Okay, so birds are unique amongst animals because only the left ovary fully matures to the stage where it releases eggs. Oh. So only, so in humans, we have two ovaries and they both take turns alternating to release an egg. Yeah. But yes, with chickens, they only have one that releases them. And a laying hen's ovary holds thousands of tiny ovas or future egg yolks. <sighs> yeah, this might ruin eggs for me. <laughs> so it's interesting to note that eggs are produced in layers, starting from the inside out. 
And so we're going to basically go into the process inside okay. a hen's body of how this happens. So this is what I, you asked me to explain and I had nothing. Yes. Yeah. Most flock raisers or chicken farmers. I like that. Yeah. You're a flock, flock ra- raiser. <laughs> flock raiser. Yeah. That's nice. Well, tell you there's something special about walking into the backyard and grabbing a few eggs for breakfast. And farm fresh eggs are protein packed gifts that families diving into self sufficiency have come to love. At some point in my life, I would love to own just like a, a small number, just enough that, yeah, you can like Two. get your morning, you know, <laughs> yeah, your morning egg or so, you know, a couple yeah. eggs. Yeah. I would love that, especially with the price of eggs. I right feel now. like yeah, you need you need some chickens in your life. I well, not right now. I don't need no, chickens. No, not life. right now. But eventually, you need some chickens in your life. Yeah, yeah. So, how often chickens lay eggs? Like we said, uh, it it varies. So, the magic behind each farm fresh egg is a twenty four to twenty six hour process. So, it could be less than twenty five, could be more. We average about twenty five. Gotcha. So, with much of this work happening overnight. At their peak, laying hens can lay up to one egg per day. Okay. So I'd need two. I'd need two hens. So the biggest involvement in your hen is creating the eggshell. The shell defends the yolk from harmful bacteria and keeps the chick or yolk safe. So hens spend much of the egg formation process making sure the calcium-rich shell is strong and protective. And when the lights are off and the hens are sleeping... That's when most of this internal work begins to happen. It's very much like the human body. Like a lot of our cellular repairs happen when we're sleeping at night, which is why it's so important to get sleep when you're sick. It's true. You got to get that sleep. Mm hmm. Yeah. So the fact that shells are created at night is clear when looking at the egg formation timeline. So, for example, if a hen starts the laying process at 7 a.m., she would create an eggshell starting around 12 p.m. and continue for 20 hours during the evening and throughout the night. Oh, man, see, that to me is like, I don't know if it's just because I'm like thinking about the process of a human, you know, baby creation. Yeah. I'm just like, wow, it only takes... 7 a.m. to noon and there's an eggshell <laughs> made like wow that's efficient that's really efficient <laughs> yeah it takes us nine months to cook something yeah what the heck are we doing we gotta take nine months my word but think about it it's just an egg like how egg. long are cows pregnant 283 days oh wow horses okay. are pregnant for 11 to 12 months 11 to 12 months wow dogs 58 yeah. to 68 days Okay. It's but still, think about it's it. Think about 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 it. So the hen lays. Okay. Now I'm thinking about it. How long does a hen sit on her egg? That's true. 20 to that's 21 whole, days. That's not the whole story. Yeah. So make, it takes about 30 days for a chicken to do the formation. To make a chicken. Yeah. From. Okay. If you want to be accurate, 31 days. It takes like a month from the time it lays the egg to when they hatch. Well, that's a little better. And think about it. They can only lay one egg a day. So when you see like six underneath them, like... That's true. Took six days. Six days to just make those eggs. But then it takes another 30-ish... Yeah. ...to actually um, hatch hatch those eggs. Now Now that we have discussed... Pregnancies and animals. <laughs> Extensively, yeah. So to ensure your laying hens achieve a consistent supply of calcium through a blend of oyster shells, vitamin D, and manganese, vitamin D acts as the taxi that gets the calcium into the hen's bloodstream where it's needed, while the manganese helps strengthen and create the structure of the egg. So remember that because it's going to be important later. Okay. Into the chicken we go. Okay. The timeline. The timeline. Okay. First 30 minutes. Okay. Wow. Really breaking <laughs> it down. The yolk release. <laughs> okay. So okay. So each female chick is born with thousands of immature yolks known as chicken ova. And for most chickens, the ova begins to develop into yolks when the hen is about 18 weeks old. 
So once a yolk has been selected to develop, it spends the next 10 days growing. When it's time for the yolk to be released, it breaks out from its protective membrane and drops into the infundibulum or the yeah. beginning of the oviduct. Okay. And this takes 30 minutes. Then the initial egg white is created. This takes about three hours. As the egg enters into the hen's reproductive tract, the egg white begins formation. It starts with a clear protective yolk casting called the vitalin membrane. And as the yolk enters the magnum, layers of thick and thin proteins known as the albumin create wow. the egg whites. Okay. And then the contents travel down the oviduct and they spin. And the spinning motion causes the formation of chalice. Oh, okay. Which are the white stringy pieces that you see in an egg. Like, you know, when you crack it and you see the like white stringy things? There's some goop. Not the egg white. The like weird stringy pieces in, in your egg that are like around yeah. the yolk. Yeah. And the chalice's role is to keep the egg yolk in the center of the egg instead of it sticking to the shell. Oh, that's really interesting. I've never Very. thought about that of like, why is it always, how does it stay in the center? But yep. there you go. When it's in that reproductive track and it's going down that um, magnum, it's basically like zigzagging back and forth in between the chicken. Now we jump to the egg shape is formed and this is taking an hour. So we are four hours into the egg formation process. Okay. Just before the egg enters the shell gland, it spends an hour in the isthmus. And while there, the inner and outer shell membrane are added around the albumin. And the contents begin to take the oval shape that you expect for a chicken. So before then, it's just kind of like a free form glob. Yep. And that's when it starts getting the oval shape. And then the egg shells are formed. And this takes about 20 hours. The whole process of the egg shell being formed takes 20 hours but this happens five hours in so the most significant piece of the egg formation process happens in the uterus or shell gland of the hen and the developing egg spends about 20 hours in the shell gland where the shell is formed and the egg shell color is added during the last five hours oh wow okay i love that it's like we decide the shell color <laughs> Yeah, they're like, what the are last we feeling five today? Hours. Yeah. Hmm. So the egg shell or the shell formation takes the most amount of time to complete, which I feel like makes sense. And it's important that the hen is fed a diet that contains the proper nutrients. So she has the nutrients needed to make the egg shell as strong as possible. So a solid shell is the best defense against the bacteria that will try to get inside the egg. That's interesting because, I mean, that's something right there that I learned fairly recently is that, you know, when the concern of like raw eggs that you would yeah. get salmonella mm -hmm. and the, the concern is actually that that bacteria would be on the outside of the egg. Yeah, not the inside. Not the inside. So like if you somehow magically just all of a sudden had the inside of egg outside, <laughs> like no shell. Yeah. That should theoretically have no bacteria as long as the shell was a strong shell that mm -hmm. held up to the bacteria. And the hens were healthy. Yeah. Well, that too. I mean, the risk mostly comes from bacteria on the outside that then, you know, if you're cracking an egg, it gets on your hands and gets mm -hmm. into it and whatever. The eggshell formation requires about four grams of calcium per shell. Hens that lack proper calcium levels typically produce soft or brittle eggshells, and sometimes an improper calcium balance can cause a hen to pull calcium from their bones to produce eggshells, which weakens Oof. their overall skeletal structure. Yeah, that's not good. There are certain breeds of chicken that lay colored eggs, and these pigments are called porphyrins, and they are selected from cells within the uterus to add color to the eggshells during the last five hours of that shell formation. So blue egg layers add pigment early in the eggshell formation process, which is why these shells are blue all the way through. And then a combination of blue and brown pigments produces a green shell color. This is with the olive egger breed. And then hens that lay white eggs do not produce any pigments during the cell formation. I mean, I guess that's, yeah, I feel like the white eggs you buy in the grocery store, unless they are like some just total natural, like we don't do anything to them, they're still treated to look that crisp white, I would assume. Yeah, they're not that white. <laughs> yeah, they don't come out that, that white. Now we move on to the egg bloom. 
Okay. The egg bloom is added and the egg emerges. And this takes seconds. Oh, so this is the moment. The formed egg travels to the vaginal area where the egg bloom is added to the shell and the egg passes through. Egg bloom or the cuticle is a protective coating that works with the strong shell to protect the egg from bacteria. It's a natural lubricant that's added to the shell for a safe exit through the cloaca. Cloaca. Which, fun fact, I know this from listening to other podcasts about birds. That is, the cloaca is 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 where everything comes out. <laughs> everything. Quite literally everything. everything. <laughs> so, very important to have this lubricant that protects the, sh- the egg from bacteria. <laughs> yeah. Because it yeah. pees and poops out of the cloaca. <laughs> yep. So, about 30 minutes after laying an egg, the next yolk will be released from the ovary, and the process will repeat itself until she has laid 8 to 12 eggs. After that, she will take a day off from egg reproduction. Oh, wow. Yeah, very interesting, right? You got to have a day off. That's wild. It is. Now that we know how eggs are made and the process of the yolk release, initial egg white creation, egg shape formation, egg shell, and then the bloom, it's time to talk about feathers. (laughs) Moving on to feathers. (gasps) To feathers. This feels like such a strange transition. I mean, you know, the hens have feathers. It's related. Yeah. Yeah. So a feather develops much like one of our hairs. It's a meticulously constructed mass of dead proteins pushed out from a follicle in living skin. But unlike a simple hair, a growing feather branches into a structure of fractal complexity. I did not like that description of hair. That's what it is, though. Dead protein pushed out from a follicle in the living skin. <laughs> That's what it is. I mean, I know. That's hair. I, I know, but that just was not it for me. So it's as if a tree were to rise, not by developing an ever more intricate system of branches and twigs, but rather than being pushed as a wholly developed plant straight up out of the ground. That's what a feather is. It's like a full tree just comes up. It's a full tree that comes out. It's not like it just subtly branches out. It's just like, boom, feather. Tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> boom, so you <unique> feather. To- <laughs> unique to birds and their dinosaur ancestors, feathers have evolved into an impressive biological structure that comes at a surprising diversity of colors and forms. And we're going to talk a little bit about feather biology. Uh, it's actually really interesting about the function development evolution and feathers are remarkable not just in the way they look to the naked eye but also for their intricate microstructure and understanding feather anatomy at the microscopic level provides insight into how feathers function so for example the interlocking of velcro like structures on many bird feathers create a smooth flexible and resilient surface that supports flight and sheds water I feel like for a long time, especially when I was a little kid, you know, you'd see a feather that had come off of a bird and then you'd see a bird and they're just so like smooth. It's like Mm -hmm. almost like they came out of a mold. They are. Yeah, exactly. And you're just like, how does that feather fit on into that? You know, like it doesn't make sense. You're like, I don't quite understand, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, although feathers come in an incredibly diverse form, they're all composed of a protein, which is a beta keratin, and made of the same basic parts, arranging in a branched structure. In the most complex feathers, the calamus extends into a central rachis, which branches into barbs. So, what this is saying is if you look at a feather, not a complex one, just like a hawk feather, a pigeon feather, you pick up off the ground and you look at it. Mm -hmm. There is a center in it, and that is the rachis. Okay. And then it branches into barbs, and then the barbs are what come off when you pull each little feather piece apart Mm. that's on the feather, which would be like the limbs of a tree, the big limbs, and the barbulettes are the twigs that come off the tree and lock into one another. And the diversity in feathers comes with the evolution of small modifications in the basic branching structures to serve different functions. Right. Okay. 
because this is a very common one and there's a difference in the way the feathers react and respond if they're the tail feathers if they're the flight feathers if they're like there are so many different kind of feathers that do different things but this is the overarching picture of how feathers are formed and what they do and how they interlock with one another okay The other one we need to take a look at is down feathers. They look fluffy because they have a loosely arranged plumulaceous with flexible barbs and relatively long barbulettes. And that traps air close to the bird's warm body. Which is why people use them for blankets. (laughs) Yes, and warmth. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Penaceous feathers are stiff and mostly flat. The big difference that comes from a small alteration in the structure. So microscopic hooks on the barbulettes interlock to form a wind and waterproof barrier that allows birds to fly and stay dry. And many feathers have both fluffy pumulaceous regions and more structural penaceous regions. So they just have both. One's going to do, they're doing different things. One's keeping them warm. And waterproof. Mm -hmm. And the other is just providing a cover, basically. Yeah, to help them glide through the air. Interesting. That is super interesting. Feathers are weird. Feathers are so weird. And, you know, they have so many different functions for birds that it's hard to cover them all. But that's why I wanted to talk about basically the main two types. Yeah. Because I felt like they were the like the most important like down feathers and then just your regular standard feather right just get a basic idea yeah of of feathers mhm similar to the basic idea of eggs cuz i think i would assume i mean obviously there's a lot of other birds and even like other creatures that lay eggs oh that yeah probably do it in a different way but this is like the basic this is hen. the basic understanding yeah hen laying <laughs> egg Of the hen laying egg, yeah. Yeah. But that's it for this week. Okay. Eggs and feathers, man. Eggs and feathers. What a combo. What a combo. Solomon from Vermont. Thank you so much for submitting that. That was super interesting. That was super interesting. I'm never going to crack an egg open again and not be super thankful for the hen that spent 25 hours making it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) I'm going to crack it open and be like, thank you, hen. Thank you. Do you Hen. think do you think Solomon has chickens and that was why? Oh, I hope so. He lives in Vermont, mm-hmm. so that feels like that tracks. They have chickens up there. Yeah. Yeah. Solomon, if you have a chicken, please name one after Josh and I. Oh my gosh, yeah. That would be <laughs> And awesome. then send us a picture of you holding the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I like not not even don't don't just send us a picture of the chicken. You gotta hold it and <laughs> you gotta hold it. Take yeah, a you picture of You gotta hold the chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. All right, I'm gonna go try to catch a pigeon and see if it knows how to lay eggs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to the grocery store and buy some eggs. You That's do that. Do. That sounds yeah. like a better idea than catching a chicken or <laughs> catching a pigeon. I think it does too, yeah. Guys, if you like this podcast, leave us a rating and review or send us an email at randomtheorypod at gmail.com. We would love to hear you got from you guys. If you have a pod idea, drop it. If you're OGRT, we love you and appreciate you. And let us know in your rating and review down below if you're on Apple Pod. Yes, definitely. The ratings and reviews really help the show out. And we just love hearing from you guys. And we love doing your ideas for podcasts. So keep those coming. All right, Science Pals. We'll see you in the next one. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.